Hello, movie trivia schmodown universe. We are so excited for season eight. Season eight is the biggest season that we have ever done. And we have launched the schmodown faction merch. That is right. Faction merch from all eight factions. They are available now. You like swag? Well, get a swag hoodie. Put on that hat with corruption hat. Put the shirt on. Get the championship design. Anytime you purchase faction merch, a percentage of the profits go into a pool. It is going to contribute to what the factions are playing for. Hell, I want to see them playing for $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. I want to see them playing for what they are able to play for, what they have deserved to play for. Who's the faction I'm supporting? Who do I want to win? And I get it. So head on over to the Skybound store now. The link is in the description of this video. If you're watching your favorite factions and you know when they're going to be competing, put on the shirt, put on the hoodie, put on the hat, and let us know. Take some pictures, tweet it out, hashtag Schmodown, and we will retweet it and show everybody who you are supporting. Enjoy the match, enjoy the merch, and we'll see you next time. Hi guys, how are you? Hey Grace. Good to see you, Grace. It's great to see both of you. Both of you are just happy, smiling faces. How are you? I know it's been a tough week. Yeah, it's been really hard. Um, sure, sure, yeah, super hard. But I just, I'm sure you guys have been expecting this, but as you know, as you've seen and heard, and Draco will be leaving us, so heartbreaking. But I do need to formally let you know that because of this and because of how this has all turned out, I will be having to strip the title from the odd couple. I know it's such a bummer. Life is so unfair, but what? that's how it is. I know. Okay. Well, I was actually expecting you to say that, Grace. And I, I do see why you would think that at first, but we've been thinking about this and trying to figure out what we can possibly do. And I actually think that we have a game plan that you could get on board with because it's just not fair that Jeff would have to give up his title when he hasn't done anything. And that's just not who we are. It's not right for our faction. So if you would just hear us out, I think you could get on our side about this. Sure. And I love the initiative. You guys are so cute. Um, no, I'm not going to change my mind. Okay, but you haven't even heard what it is that we have to say yet. Like, I actually think that you might get on board with the plan, and you, yeah, it's the right thing for the fans. It's the right thing for everybody involved. So if you just listen to us for, like, a second, then maybe you would agree. Yeah, it's just that actually, without even hearing it, I hate it. So, no. Wait, wait a second. Roxy, let, let me handle this for a second. Grace, okay. we go way back. We, we go back as far as the lion's den. Like... You know what I'm all about. I'm all about winning. I, you can't just strip me of the belt. I, I haven't done anything to lose it. Let me, you know what? I, I play with anyone in the league. Tell Shazam I'll play with anyone in the league. And you know what? They can pick it. I don't care who it is. I'm going to beat them. Please? Wow. Um, I have to say, I really, I'm mean, this growl, it's just... This is a beautiful performance from both of you, really. I just, I love the groveling. I love when you say please. It's so sweet. No, I'm not going to change my Grace, mind. we'll do anything. We'll do anything. No, I know. It's so fun to know that I have that power, but I'm not going to change my mind. Rules are rules. I'm the boss. This is what's happening. So I just, I have to follow and I have to go down the list to whoever's next in line for the championship. And, Who's and that is corruption. <clears throat> Can't give it to them. Okay, give me a day. Oh, God, thank you. What? We're back in business, Rox. I don't even know what just, you think that that means that we're good to go? As long as they don't pick Makuga or Mayimbe for me, I think so. You said anybody, anybody means anybody, so okay. Well, whatever, okay. It's, better, it's better than just giving it away for free. Hello everybody, 
Welcome back to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. The Star Wars tournament continues. We have teams tournament going on. We have singles matches going on. We have so much happening. But this particular match up here, this is a big one. This is a massive, massive match in the Star Wars tournament. It is the first round. And the Saint, Sean Sullivan from Corruption, is going to try to advance. In order to do that, he has to face a guy that no one thought had a chance in last year's Star Wars tournament. And he said, OK, I'll, I'll do the play in. I'll win that. Then I'll match you. I'm going to beat Ken Knapsack. Then I'm going to beat Laura Kelly. Then I'm going to beat the uh, Andrew DiMolanta. And he made it all the way through to the spectacular. And I'm talking about Andres Ace Cabrera, the winner of the ultimate Star Wars showdown last year. And here he is back in a Star Wars tournament, Mark. You know, now that we're in the thick of all these different Schmodown matches and tournaments going on, the one person that I trust to juggle all these divisions is you, Sir Harloff. But this is one that was circled on our calendar because of the reason you said, look, Sean Sullivan has been a great player. He just has had some tough loss. He had a tough loss earlier this season already. But when you look at Andres Ace Cabrera, that's the guy where he's already been in the league for a while, but he really had his coming out party last season, winning this entire tournament. But the hardest thing to do in both March Madness and in a tournament in the Schmodown is to be a repeat tournament winner. Can Andres take the first step towards that goal today? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, there's some players could have a big chip on their shoulder, right? Some people could have... Because Andres Cabrera is four and one in the Star Wars division. That is not easy to do. That is very hard to do. Um, he was drafted a little later than maybe people thought he was going to be. And it was like, oh, my God, that's going to cause dissension in the ranks with Andres and Winston. Turned out that was exactly the opposite of what happened. Andres trusts in Winston and said, you know, I'm going to do my thing. He, he, for Andres Cabrera, it's almost like the doubt from the audience and the doubt from his peers it's a part of what makes him as good as he is because he uses that to say, please keep doubting me because I'm going to take you somewhere with me. And that place is upset city. And he's done that many, many times. He's not coming in today as the underdog. He's coming in as the favorite. Um, and Sean Sullivan is looking to try to take Andres to, to upset city today because Sullivan has been on the precipice of right there. He's right there. So many times, Marie Wilson, he almost did it. He had a great match against Adam Witt, which seems everybody has great matches with Adam Witt. Um, but then it was the Laura Kelly match where Laura, both Laura Kelly and Marie Wilson bested him. He needs this win here today. In order to stay relevant inside of the Star Wars division, he can still play and he'll still be around. There's another tournament, but he knows he needs to win here, and it's not an easy task to do it against Ace. Uh, doubt could be fueling both of these competitors right now for different reasons, because I feel like people underestimating Andres hydrates him just as much as his trusty jug of water. With Sullivan, his hydration of choice is whiskey. And maybe in a galaxy far, far away, he'd be dealing death sticks in some bar. But right now, today, he is here with one mission in mind, and that is to fell last year's tournament champion. He gets the chance to do that right now. That's right. And we know that Corruption and Swag have been struggling a little bit this season, but they both need a big win here. And it's funny because they both, Corruption obviously finishing winning the whole thing last year. Swag coming in second place. Both Winston and Shannon battled it out all the way to the end for manager of the year with Shannon Barney obviously taking manager of the year last year. So this is this is another must win for either one of these teams in order to move forward to keep on going to get those points it's not over by a long shot but both of these teams know how crucial the tournaments are because they both did very well in them last season hey you get a w you get some points but also you get to show up again and you have the opportunity for more points as winston and shannon both know from last season for more on that and a look as to how we got here today it's a promo from the best in the biz mr nerd chronic disappointment is, is really what I'm feeling. I, I, I don't know, I just didn't, I, it wasn't my day, it wasn't my day. You came out and showed the world that you will never just sit there and take it at all. I will always love you, I'm so proud of you. I can't wait to the day that I get to hold that belt up with you, man. Yo, guess who's back? Alex Damon retains the belt. It's not completely shocking that that happened, but in the manner in which it did happen, I think is a little bit shocking considering the run that he's had in Star Wars. I have one of the best records in the Star Wars division. Four wins, 
one loss to the greatest champ of all time. And just cause of that, y'all count me out? Nah, Upset City, back with a vengeance. Let's keep it real, Winston. Ace had his 15 minutes last season, and as much as I enjoyed watching his overly animated eyebrows, I am more than ready to see someone else get their 15 minutes, and why not Sean Sullivan? Sean the Saint Sullivan! All right, well, let's get this part out of the way. This season hasn't started exactly how I wanted it to. You asked, is there going to be pressure on Sean Sullivan? I think his mouth has put the pressure on him. But I lost my first match to a rookie. Turns out it's tournament time. I get Ace Cabrera round one. It's my time of the season again, tournament season. I was taking number 24 this year in the draft. That's just one over Jordan. Call me Kobe. I'm bringing that Mamba mentality this year. This time, I'm gonna run the tournament back again. It's the Star Wars Schmodown. There's a few questions that one competitor doesn't know, and guess what? That just means the other competitor wins. Whatever my next match is, it's gonna be a win. That man has Star Wars pulsing through his veins, and he's long overdue for a win. Might as well make it today. I get it, I get it. You think you can keep up with me, but you can't. Not even on my level. Call me back for that title. This is just one step inside this entire division when I sweep this tournament once again. So watch out, Upset City Ace is here to dominate once again. I don't know much about, you know, municipal design or cities or any of that, but uh, you're gonna be the one upset after this because you get one round in this tournament. I get the rest. You're just the warm up kid. Well, there it is, and it's pretty much what we were talking about. There, what Andres has been here before; he's done this before; he's ready to do it again. Winston has the confidence in putting Andres in this because Andres could have sat out this tournament, played another uh, maybe one match before it got to a title shot. But Winston trusts in him to put him in the tournament to get those points, to win more points for the faction, to get back into the race. Shannon also has two Star Wars competitors with Joseph Scrimshaw and Sullivan. It shows you the confidence that she has in Sullivan and saying, Go for it. Get the points for corruption. Do what you got to do. So the confidence in the managers with their players are there. The crap talking, obviously, between the two of these managers are there. And Sullivan talking a lot. He's been talking a big game. And Andre's just saying, bring it, man. You can talk as much as you want. I'm going to do what I've been doing for the last season. With the field of competition as strong as it has been so far this season in the Star Wars Schmodown division, the odds of winning this tournament for any one individual competitor are approximately the same odds as avoiding an asteroid, which would be 1 in uh, 1,283 is my best. Why don't we just introduce some competitors who actually know that answer? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia Schmodown. Introducing first, representing corruption with a record of one win, two defeats in the Star Wars division. He is the Saint, Sean Sullivan. Sean Sullivan, Saint of Corruption. Um. Look, man, this is, like I said beforehand, you had a great match against Marie Wilson. I've seen you on the after shows. A couple things, you know, you just, you knew you had to get back into the studying gym, if you will. And now you are up against a guy who won an entire tournament last season. How do you prepare for Andres Ace Cabrera? Well, Christian, there it involves a lot of whiskey. It involves a, uh, a little bit of watching some movies and a little bit of uh, looking on the Internet for random names that no one should have to know for any reason. And that's why we're asking the questions mm -hmm. and not attempting those answers. Sean, you do have a chance to be this year's Andre Ace Cabrera, a competitor that we're aware of, but then makes a giant leap forward by winning a tournament. What makes you think you're the person for that job? Well, I think I think if we wanted to start calling me Andres Cabrera, I think I could rock it. Uh, it might be a little culturally insensitive, but, you know, I think I could take it. I prefer my name personally, but if that's what you want, uh, Mark, I'll take it. All right, Ace. 
Oh, man. So, you know, Sean, I will say before we bring in your competitor here, you know, this is a big match for not only yourself, but for corruption. What are the conversations like going into this with Shannon Barney? Uh, you know, Shannon's got the utmost com- confidence in me. Um, the rest of the faction's got the utmost confidence. I couldn't ask for a betty- better uh, set of, of teammates to study with than Corruption. Uh, they are constant go-getters. They are constantly after it. Um, and you know what? A lot of them have a lot of secret Star Wars knowledge that would shock you. Um, there's some the, the elevated level of the questions I'm getting in training sessions this year versus last year is a whole, huge game changer. All right. Well, thank you to Sean the Saint Sullivan and his opponent representing Swag with a record of four wins, one defeat, and one knockout. He is the 2020 Ultimate Schmodown Star Wars Tournament winner. He is. Andres is Cabrera. Andres Ace Cabrera, you are back, my man. It has been about, I mean, man, that I felt like I kept saying, and your winner, Andres Ace Cabrera. I kept saying it, saying it, saying it, and now you are back. You are here in the division that really you made your name in, in the Schmodown. How does it feel to be back? And is it a little bit more comfortable now coming back into the tournament setting? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's fun, right? I, I feel like having fun and winning matches uh, as quickly as you can is probably the best way to go about it. Uh, it's always interesting to have a longer wait between matches. So doing it one after the other in a tournament setting is, is fun. It's different. Andres, you've proven that not only do you not care if people doubt you, that you actually thrive on folks underestimating you, on barbs that people lob at you because of your feelings on Game of Thrones Season 8, but now you find yourself in a tournament setting once again. And so do you still feel like the temperature out there is people underestimating you? Are people giving you your just due for how great you've been? I mean... I don't know if y'all heard, but definitely not what I've been hearing. Uh, I keep hearing that I, I have no shot in this tournament and that all these new guys are going to win. Uh, and I'm shocked, honestly. Uh, I am definitely shocked considering that these guys are brand new and I know they're all Dragon Con players and all that. But I feel like I am definitely being underestimated over new players who just started. Uh, and now I'm coming right back and I'm going right back into Upset City. So. Well, last one for you here, Andres, because, you know, we, we've seen there were rumors kind of going into the season of how you were going to respond to Winston drafting you where it was like, oh, this is going to be the nail in uh, Cabrera's coffin and swag. He's going to leave. That clearly didn't happen. We, we saw the loyalty that you do have to Winston. So what's the relationship been like with Winston? Has it changed? Has it gotten stronger kind of going into this match and for the prep of this match? It's continued on the same path because we have our core team of Paul Shandrew, Winston, uh, and that unit is kind of what leads to charge. And obviously now adding Laura into that just adds even more fire into it. So to me, it's only increased as far as uh, swag goes and as far as our relationship goes. I think it's just getting better. All right. Well, thank you to Andres Ace Cabrera. Good luck to you, sir. Mark, our competitors have entered the virtual battlefield. What are the rules of round number one? The rules of round number one, you know, sitting down, I can get used to this. In round number one, it is Star Wars, which means there's 10 questions from 10 different corners of that galaxy far, far away that tends to do pretty well at the box office. Each question is worth one point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. Wink, wink. We'll ask a question. You have 15 seconds to get that answer into your head and then onto whatever page you prefer to write upon. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a jeté rule. You can also just say repeat. You each have one challenge. You may also utilize during the match if you think something's fishy, you didn't like the way a question was ruled because your answer may not have been given points. You can challenge. We'll bring your manager in. We'll all delineate, come to an understanding, and ultimately will be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. 
All right, Christian, I see focus on Sullivan, and I see Andres doing that cool Iceman twirl of his writing utensil. So I'd say both competitors pretty ready to go. Do you want to confirm that? Let's find that out. Andres, are you ready? Ready. Sean, are you ready? Let's do this. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Round number one. Question number one, we're going to start with Revenge of the Sith. In Revenge of the Sith, which type of droids attack Obi-Wan's ship during the opening battle of Coruscant and shut down all of his controls? Oh, starting out with an easy one, huh? <laughs> you know, this is, uh, at this point, this might be easy for these two guys. Who knows? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please, and we start with Andres. Buzz droids. Yes. And Sean. Buzz droids. That's correct. One point apiece as we get to question number two. Your second question is in the category of creatures and alien races. And for a point, in the Geonosis arena, what kind of beast readily snaps a pike in half with its mouth? See, you know, it's funny because I wonder how Shannon has reacted since we've seen that Laura has gone all in with swag now. And Andre is huh? mentioning her and Chandru, and they're all on the same page. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Sean Sullivan. A Nexu. That is incorrect. Andres. Ackley. That is correct. Andres Cabrera goes up to one here as we get to question number three. Question number three. This is the Rise of Skywalker. In the Rise of Skywalker, you ever gonna go? Are the first words spoken by which character? Yeah, you know, every manager wants to win every game, but you do get the feeling Shannon has rivalries with everyone, but yes. the fact that it's this faction today made right now, rivalry. five, you're not wrong. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, and we start with Andres. Poe Dameron. Yes, sir. And Sean. Poe. Yep. All right. So we now see 3-2. Andres keeping his lead of one as we get to question number four. And it's in the category of the greatest Star Wars of them all, Return of the Jedi. Your question for a point. What is the name of Jabba's tiny Kowakian monkey lizard court jester? And I've never had more fun saying a line of words there, Christian. That was fun. Well, we haven't said, we haven't run up. Oh, I can't say anything. Five, four, we're going to spoilers. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Sean Sullivan. Salacious Crumb? Yes. And Andres? Uh, it's your homie, Mark. Salacious B. Crumb. Yes. All right. So now, four, three, four, three, as we get to question five. Question five. Here it is. Who said it in The Phantom Menace? Who said you can't stop the change any more than you can stop the suns from setting? Sounds like a puberty talk. It does? Yeah. It does? Getting, getting hair where there's no hair before? Oh. Just count down, you monkey lizard. Cordy. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, please, Andres. Shmi Skywalker. Yes. And Sean. Probably butchered the spelling. Shmi. That's acceptable. Yes. So we got four, five, four, five, four. And Cabrera sees his one point lead continue as we get to our next question. That's in the category of Rogue One, which is, in fact, a Star Wars story. The question What was Jin Urso's mother's first name? Christian, I hate to ask this because it's probably a five-pointer. Does anybody know what the B in Salacious B Crumb stands for? Yeah. Is uh -oh. it Bernard? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. You got a point, Mark. You won. You're the champion now. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Hands up. And Sean Sullivan. Uh, I, I'm just realizing I got it wrong. Liana. It's, that is incorrect. It's Lyra. Well, mm -hmm. we'll find out in a second. It is indeed Lyra. Lyra. Yes, Lyra. you got it there, Andres. Or you Lyra. It. Yeah, you got it. So it is 6-4. Andres goes up by two. Andres goes up by two. And now we get to, uh, this is question seven. Heroes and villains. 
in the most accurate description of the best movie in Star Wars history, The Empire Strikes Back. According to Yoda, what does a Jedi never use the Force for? And Christian, now it's just a question of Sullivan can compose himself, get through round one, and get to that wheel round. Five. Four, I'm going to use a repeat. Okay, three, here three. it is. First one. In The Empire Strikes Back, according to Yoda, what does a Jedi never use the Force for? It's fun. Because if you're inside these competitors' heads, they're actually replaying the movie frame for frame, trying to get that quote. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, please. Hands up. And Andres. Attack. Yes. And Sean. Attack. That's right. So Andres using that JT wisely and takes his time. He hits it. Sees himself two points up, seven, five, as we get to question eight. Yep. Sullivan writes the ship. Trails by two. Next question worth a point. It's in the category of Attack of the Clones, and it is. In episode two, Attack of the Clones, while Padme is now a senator, who is the current queen of Naboo? Both competitors showing a very good game so far, but Brera is one step ahead of the moment. The breadth of knowledge is astounding. Five, four, three. Two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Sean Sullivan. So it's pronounced Jamila, but it's spelt real funky. Jamilia. That's acceptable. And Andres. Queen Jamila, Jamilia. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. also acceptable. So we have now Andres Cabrera still holds his lead. That is both, they both get it correct. Eight, six, eight, six. As we get to question nine, question nine. Here it is. The Force Awakens. In The Force Awakens, Lore Santeca says to Poe that Leia is not a general to him, but she is what? All right. You like The Force Awakens, right? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. What was better, The Force Awakens or the short rib after it? Five, four, three. <laughs> that was good. Two, one. Pens down, please. And Sean Sullivan. Oh, excuse me. This is this is question nine. This is Andres. Royalty. Yes, Sean. No. All right. So Sean misses, and Andres still perfect. Okay. So nine six. So where we stand at the moment. This is question ten. Cabrera is still pitching a perfect round thus far. If he gets this right, then he and only he will have to answer this uh, bonus question mark. So here we go. Yeah, it could be a massive bonus question point. We're not there yet. Where we are is the category of mixed bag. So let's reach our hands in there and pull out this question. Two Wookiees escort Yoda to an escape pod on Kashyyyk. Chewbacca is one. Who is the other? And so like we said, Sullivan trying to get seven points here. Cabrera looking for 10 with a possible 11 if he hits this one. Did you just hear the question I asked? It's wonderful. It was really good. What? I loved what? it. What? Five, four, three, two. One. Pens down, Sean Sullivan. Tarful. Yes, and Andres for the perfect round. Tarful. Andres hits a 10 7. So Andres Cabrera is looking to get himself four points ahead if he can hit this question. Now, uh, Andres, you do not have to write this down. You simply have to answer it. Are you ready? Ready. In the Rise of Skywalker, as the Falcon lands on Pasana, there are two cliff dwelling rodent like creatures seen. What is the name of this species? Okie pokey. That is correct. One more point. Andres Cabrera looking great here. 11 7. Sean Sullivan playing really well, but Andres Cabrera perfect with a one point uh, bonus point as we see ourselves 11 7 mark. And now we get to round number two. Just unfair the two guys this handsome also know that much about Star Wars. Round number two is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Each competitor gets a spin at that there wheel. Once you settle on your destined category, you get five questions in that particular round. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question, but stealing, remember we talked about it briefly, it's available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We give you four options, one of which we're told is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. If you miss a question, 
your opponent does have the opportunity to steal. So, Christian, we see ourselves with a four-point ball game. Andres, Ace Cabrera at the lead. Andres, the choice is yours. Do you want to spin first or defer to your opponent? Oh, okay. That makes sense. So I, I don't get to ask Winston. I was literally going to ask Winston, what should I do? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, let's go. Why not? Let's do it. All right, Winston, you got 60 seconds to talk to Ace starting now. Hey, Sorry, before dude. I get to you. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. But before I even get pumped you up. You good, brother. You good. Christian, let me ask you a question. Sure. Describe what a young Jedi Master looks like. You. No. Oh. <laughs> it's this gentleman right here. Oh. I mean, right here. I oh. don't know how the mirrors yeah. work on cameras. Oh. But I will say, Ace, you are killing them like you always do, sir. You are out here wielding the force like it's an extension of your body. So, mm. let's take this wheel. Let's spin a category that you like, which is all of them. And then let's go on and get another perfect round and then another perfect round and show them that they messing with the baddest mother that's in this entire tournament. All right. Let's do it. Andres Cabrera, it is his choice. And here is the spin. So now Ace has 11 points going into this round, Mark. This is a big spin here for last year's tournament winner. Which, Mr. Yeah. Ellis, I must say I agree with you is what is the best Star Wars film, I just, it's missing a little bit of mace in it. That's all. Attack of the Clones has mace if you want that one. So what, you got 50 seconds starting now. Dude, I love this movie. It's an amazing film. Uh, let's do it. That's all I needed to hear. May the force be with you. All right. So, Andres, you're going to get five questions in the realm of Attack of the Clones. All right. Are you ready? Ready. Here we go. Who plays Padme's handmaiden, Dorme? Rose Byrne. Yes. Two points. What does Mace Windu say when he sneaks up on Count Dooku in the Geonosis Coliseum? This party's over. Yes, he does. Two points. In Attack of the Clones. When Count Dooku tries to escape the battle on Geonosis, what speeder is he using? Flit knock speeder. Flit not speeder. Watch your mouth. But that is right. Uh, two points. And we're going to the next one here. That was question three. Yep. How many parsecs out of the Rishi maze is Camino? Twelve. Wow. That is correct. Two more points. Um, all right, Andres. For your last question, here it is. In Attack of the Clones, who plays Baru? Bonnie Piaz. That is correct. Andres Cabrera annihilating that round. 21-7. Didn't even use more than three seconds for each question. So a very impressive round by Andres Cabrera. Second, Shannon, starting now. Sean. Hey, Shannon. Hey, buddy. Uh, so we know what kind of ace we've got today, right? Mm -hmm. Now that we've got that out of the way, you don't need to worry about what kind of ace we've got anymore. This is your game, okay? The only thing that you need to worry about is answering your questions. I know in your head you're pissed off about round one, and we can't afford to do that right now. So whatever you're replaying in your head, whatever scenarios or whatever, you're going, oh, I knew it, but stops now. It's done. You clear your head. You don't think about anything else but this wheel around, okay? Because that's all you can do. All I told you to do today was come out here and play your best game. So play your best game for you, not for me, not for corruption, not for anyone else. You're going to do this for yourself because you deserve it, okay? So yes, clear your head. You're still in this game. There's still plenty of time to go. Spin this wheel. Let's do this. Take a sip of Let's whiskey. Go. I'm right here with you, baby. Let's do this. Um, the spin is in. Let's go. I would say corruption and just the most alcohol during matches, Christian. You agree with that? Yeah. Um, yes, I think so. That's true. All right. We're li Ooh, that, that's the last Jedi. That's the last Jedi. 60 seconds to the side on last Jedi. 
I'm gonna tell you right now before you even before you decide. Whatever your gut's telling you to do, you need to go with it. Okay. I know it's a liberal wheel, and I know you have room to spin or keep whatever you want right now. But we're going for max points here. So whatever your gut is telling you, you're gonna get max points on. Whether that's to stay here or respin, you need to do that. Make that choice for yourself. Uh, I say we keep it. Okay, let's do it. You got this. All right, Mark. So Sean Sullivan trying to get some points on the board here. He's got the Last Jedi. Five questions. That's right. These questions are about the Last Jedi, the original Last Jedi, not the Change.org remake. Right. Sean, five questions. Each one worth two points, such as this one. In Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, the opening crawl states, "But the Resistance has been what?" I got to go multiple choice on this one. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, found, B, exposed, C, weakened, or D, cornered? I'm going to go with cornered. That is incorrect. So for a one-point steal, Andres, I'm going to repeat the question and the options for a point. In Episode 8, The Last Jedi, the opening crawl states, but the resistance has been what? Is it A, found, B, exposed, C, weakened, or D, cornered? Exposed. That is correct for a one-point steal. And Andres Cabrera adding a little bit more to his lead as we get to question two, round two. Going back to Sean for two points. In The Last Jedi, how many total resistance bomber ships arrive to try and destroy the dreadnought? Seven. Is incorrect. So for another steal opportunity, this time for two points, we pivot to Andres. The question, in The Last Jedi, how many total resistance bomber ships arrive to try and destroy the dreadnought? Is it 11? It is not 11. It is eight is the total. Eight All right. I was actually going to say eight. All right. All right. Christian, here's where That's we stand good. right now. We still have three questions left for Sean Sullivan. So plenty of time for him to get out of knockout territory. But it is currently a 15-point lead for Andres. There's still six possible points on the board in this round for Sean Sullivan. So a possible steal here from Andres could result in a knockout. We're not there yet. Where we are is question number three for Sullivan in the category of The Last Jedi. What is the name of the MG-100 Star Fortress from which Paige Tico managed to drop a payload of proton bombs to destroy the First Order Dreadnought? That would be the Cobalt Hammer. That is a big two-point answer for that. Sean Sullivan. Uh, he gets himself a little bit closer to out of the range as we get to the next question. That's right. It is now a 13-point game. Two questions remain. Your penultimate question in The Last Jedi. What species of creature did the Resistance encounter in the abandoned Rebel base on Crate? They were vault -techs. He's starting to get hot here, Christian. That is another correct answer. That cuts the lead to 11, and it comes down to this. To avoid the knockout, Sean Sullivan must at least get a point on this last question. If he misses it, or should Andre steal it, which would be Sean missing it, then it will be ruled a knockout, and Andres will advance in the tournament. Sean, the category is The Last Jedi. The question, what elite group of human warriors serve as the personal bodyguards to Supreme Leader Snoke? The Praetorian Guards. And man, are they a cool toy. That is correct, excuse me, figure. And now... We go to round three because Sean Sullivan has cut the lead to nine. Yeah, that was big because he just, instead of getting that extra plus one for swag now, he's taking that off the board. The negative one is still there, but the plus one is now gone. So that was a big move there by, by Sean to be able to do that. All right, now we get into the next round. It is the third and final round, Mark. 
It is the round that will determine the match because it's an odd number. I believe we are out of sudden death territory. Either way, round number three works as thus. We need some help from each competitor in the form of three numbers. These numbers may range from 1 to 20. Each number corresponds to a different corner of Star Wars Schmodown Mystery. And those are where we get your questions. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three. Your final question, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round at number three. And now let's get to those numbers. So, Andres, you do enjoy a sizable nine-point lead. You have the right to give us your three numbers first from one to 20. What feels destined? Uh, let's do uh, eight, 11, and 13. Eight, 11, and 13. Is that what you said, Andres? Yes. Okay. Yes. And Sean? Well, I was going to go... Uh... One, uh, one, 13, and eight, but it looks like Ace took those. So uh, let's go with uh, four, 15, 16. Four, 15, and 16 for Sean Sullivan. Mm -hmm. Winston, 60 seconds starting now. Out of you, my guy. That's exactly what. That's exactly what I expect to see out of you is is to be the boss that you are to show everybody why you are Mr. Star Wars Tournament. So now here's the thing. Sean is not gonna go down quietly into that night. All right. So stay sharp. Uh, I, I I believe we're gonna we're gonna be able to get this in a TKO, but he is ready and he's he's on fire now. So stay sharp, young Padawan. Let's go and get this. All right. Let's do it, man. I think we have swag. He's left. Let's go. That is how you fight, Sean Sullivan. That is how you freaking fight. And that is the energy I want in round number three. Whatever it was, whatever you snapped into in round two, you keep that energy for these next three questions. Do you understand me? Oh, I got because this. I'm what's not, not going to happen here, what's not going to happen here is a TKO. We're not giving them that satisfaction today. You're not giving them that satisfaction because you're better than that. You know this information. You know what you have to do. You have of all of your repeats. If something sounds funny, do not wait until they say incorrect to think about it, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you know this stuff, like the back of your hand. All you need to worry about right now is yourself. You can do this. I know you can do this. Hell no, TKO. Not today. All right. Not thank you, thank yep. you to Shannon. All right, Mark. So our competitors are here. We are going to start with Sean Sullivan. Sean does need to hit all three of his questions here in order to avoid the TKO because Andres has a nine point lead at the moment and it is 22 13. That's right. Sean selected number four for his two point question. That's Jim Harbaugh's Michigan number. And now it equals episode three Revenge of the Sith. And for two points and to stay in the match. What group does Chancellor Palpatine refer to when he warns they don't trust you, Anakin? Uh, the Jedi Council or the Jedi Masters. The Jedi Council is a popular program I enjoy as well. That is correct for two points. The lead is seven. Sticking with Sean Sullivan here. Now he has his three-pointer. And that could cut the lead to four. Sean, you selected number 15 with your three-point question. And that equals planets and locations. Okay. And the question. After finding R2-D2 and being knocked out, in what location of Tatooine does Obi-Wan find an unconscious Luke in A New Hope? The Jundlin Wastes. Yeah, they're not to be traveled lightly. That is correct for three points. And Christian Sean Sullivan looking like he was inspired by his manager. He now has this five-pointer. If he gets it correct... He's going to avoid the TKO and force Andres Ace Cabrera to answer a question. That's right. So in order to avoid the TKO and force it back to Andres, here is the final question. Mark, it is question, excuse me, category 16. It's Joe Montana's number. He wasn't too bad at comeback victories. And now it is the Clone Wars movie. For five points and the lead. Who was the general that led the droid army? in the opening battle on Christophsis. That would be General Loathsome. Christian, Andre's going to have to answer some questions. 
Gonna have to answer. If he hits his, well, yes, he avoids a TKO, but Andres needs to answer one question right now. He needs to hit just his two pointer to win the game. If he misses, he still has the opportunity to win it with his three or his five. But yes, he, the TKO is now gone, and we have an opportunity here for Andres Cabrera to win the game with his two point question. Mark, he chose category eight. That's Cal Ripken's number. It's also Kobe's. And now it belongs to vehicles, weapons, and technology. And for two points, Andres, and to advance in the Schmodown Star Wars Tournament. In Revenge of the Sith, what is the specific name of the Magna Guard combat droid used as General Grievous's bodyguards? I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use a repeat on that. Second one. All right. Categories, vehicles, weapons, and technology. The question, in Revenge of the Sith, what is the specific name of the Magna Guard combat droid used as General Grievous's bodyguards? The IG-100 Magna Guard. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Andre. He does it again. Another tournament. That is five, sh yes, sir. <laughs> five straight tournament victories for Andres. Ace Cabrera sees himself go up 5-1 as he will now be facing the major Thomas Harper in a showdown here. It, this is going to happen in the next round. All right. So we are going to throw to... I guess me in a second here, Mark, I'm going to drop you out in just a moment and throw to my situations. So, uh, Mark, take a break, my friend, as we throw to go ahead, take it away, me. All right, everybody. I'm here today. Once again, oh, it's good to see you, me. Thank you. you. Uh, look, this is an incredible, incredible moment here for you against Andre. So you're undefeated in tournaments. This is your fifth straight tournament win. Um, and you didn't even sweat going into this one. I know that you looked like you got a little bit of upset with yourself. I'm, I'm still mad. Yeah. So tell I'm, me about that. Well, because I know it was eight, but then I was thinking, like, wait a minute, if if because I I counted how many afterwards got eliminated, so I was like, there's eleven, but then I, I just ah, oh, I knew it was eight. That's why I'm still mad because I could have done even better, and it's just I, I second guess myself, and I was like, no, it's eleven, but that's my bad. Nonetheless, you see yourself once again, Winston, with another win here in Star Wars, uh, a, a division that you guys dominated last season because of of this man here, Andres Cabrera. You took your time. You took a gamble, Winston, in the in the draft, and you waited and you got him again. Um, and the strategy now, because Laura seems to be on the same page, Andres is on the same page. Uh, do you, you got to be feeling pretty good about your chances in Star Wars overall? A thousand percent. I mean, I went and took two the two baddest people in all of Star Wars, and I put them together and made them essentially Ben and Ray. Like they're they're literally about to take all of the force of the Jedi against you. Now in this case, Laura seems to be more of the Kylo side of things, and Ace seems to be a little bit more of the Ray side of things. It doesn't matter. The point is, collectively together, they are about to put an end to all this darkness that reigns over the Star Wars division. No more Hunter. No more Demon. Who's worried about a major? I got a squad leader. All right, so let's go. Well, let's talk about that because that's who you get next. The major Thomas Harper, he's 2-0 and inside of Star Wars. And Andres, you mentioned in the beginning of it how everybody was talking about the Dragon Con people and the new players. And two-part question here. One, do you think with a performance like this today that you're going to get that respect that, you know, the, the audience will go, all right, maybe I shouldn't have overlooked Andres. And then second part of that question, how ready are, are you to play Thomas Harper? So ready. I, I've been... So excited to play Thomas Harper, especially considering I think he was one of the first Star Wars people taken in the draft. Well, uh, he was the first one, yeah. First one without even having played a match. And I've won four, only lost once to the greatest champ ever, which is Alex Damon. Five now, Andre. Five now. Uh, so I'm good. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all, but y'all want me to be afraid of Thomas Harper and y'all picking him to win the whole tourney. Sorry, I'm going to have to bust that bracket again because I am taking him down just like I've taken down everyone else because this is nothing to me. And so. when, another thing, I know that you guys are probably looking for that KO, but like you said, it's it's it would have been an extra point, but nonetheless, you still pick up three. That's 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 really good here. You The corruption and swag have been kind of trying to 
climb up just a little bit. You do that here today. And how do you feel not only being able to do that, but also doing it against Shannon? I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. I know people voted that Shannon and Roxy had the biggest feud last year. But let's be honest. Roxy really wasn't in that conversation when it came down to it. It was between me and Shannon handling business back and forth, trading blows, trading barbs, our players going at each other. And the one thing that we really figured out last season is that this is our tournament. This is Ace's tournament. This is what he does. And I couldn't have been prouder of him for that. So Shannon, I apologize that I had to, you know, we had to do what we had to do today. Sean, you, I, I, I honestly, I'm very proud of you, homie. Like I'm being real with you. I know you had a rough start in this match, but that's the heart of a champion that goes all the way to his five pointer to do that. I couldn't be prouder of you in that regard, because honestly, I, I, I put my hat off to people that fight to the very end. But unfortunately, today you just happen to visit Upset City. Once again, Andres Ace Cabrera taking the victory here, five and one, advancing to the next round of the tournament. Said that many times over, and we say it again as Andres Cabrera advances, and he will be facing the major Thomas Harper. Andres, congratulations. Winston, congratulations. Back to Mark and that other guy. How'd I do that? That was cool. Hey, Christian, you see the new kid we got doing interviews? He is nervous. Terrible. He was nervous. He had the sweating like an idiot. And I tell that guy oh. to. He's think, brutal. I think he was nervous then. You should wait to see him with Shannon. Man, she put him off. back. Put him back in. I haven't talked to Shannon and Sean now. We'll do that in a second. But uh, yeah, it was uh, very. I'm ver very curious to get your take overall. But we're gonna throw to Skippy Madu, who is with uh, Shannon and Sean Sullivan. All right, back here with <laughs> Sean. Sean Sullivan. Uh, <laughs> I kind of yeah. feel. I kind of feel a little bit like a joke after that uh, first round. So I don't you I'd, dare. Uh, don't you it. dare. Well, I mean, it, I don't necessarily know if it was the first. I think it was this, it, after you had gotten that rounds two and you missed those few up top, I think that you, I think Shannon was right. You had to get yourself locked back in. Your confidence was weighing down a little bit. Would you agree with that? Uh, I wouldn't say my confidence ever waned. I think the issue was I kind of, I, I you know, every question I missed in round one, I, w I had the two answers and I went, you know, two answers in my head and I went, no, my gut tells me it's this. I went with my gut and you know what today my gut was wrong so you know like i wrote liana instead of lira which liana holic is uh jin's alias she uses uh you know the uh, the nexu jumps on the uh Geonos Shin, uh piker whatever doesn't snap the pike you know i was just slightly off and i think that kind of it pissed me off more than anything um yeah, yeah well, uh, Chad, that was that was something I was going to say there, too, because what it looked like was as you gave that speech to him and I know that you had to be sweating there on the KO, but he bounces back from the KO. And then even more so because the negative one was there and you said it yourself, you know, to your credit, you said they can talk about TKO all day long. It's not going to happen. It didn't happen. You didn't get the win, but you didn't get TKO and you don't lose that point. That's got to give you some a good feeling kind of going out of this thing. Of course, listen, we have had a rough start and I, I think it's safe to say corruption is not a first quarter team. We're just not. And I'm okay with that. I've reconciled with that. There's still three more quarters to go here. So I'm not sweating bullets. I'm not nervous yet. I'm not concerned. This is where we're at and this is how we play. Um, the, the KO walked away from it. The TKO, I don't have a TKO on my record. Every single loss of mine and my teams, I can walk away from and go, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not upset. I'm not, I'm, I'm upset. I want to win. Obviously I want to win. Obviously Sean wants to win. We put in so much work for my players to win. So whether it's, I mean, I don't know what it is because we've got the studying down. We've got the camaraderie down. We got the teamwork down. We've got the, I mean, this is the most driven faction I have ever seen. And every single player works together, whether it's their match or not, whether it's their division or not, lady luck is just not on our side right now, but she'll come around. Well, Sean, I mean, you. The, the good news about Star Wars Division is most, I mean, even Andrew DiMolanta, when he won the championship, after he won it, he was three and three. So this mm -hmm. is a very different division than, say, singles and teams where you have to have more wins than you have losses here. You find yourself at one and three. There is a way back from this. Is there anybody in particular that you see out there that you feel you'd be a, a, at a good scrap with? Wait to see how the tournament pans out. What are your thoughts right now kind of looking at the division? You know, really, I'll take anyone. That's the thing with this division. I mean, um, look, no, no, sh no shot on Ace. I respect Ace more than most people in this, in this division. Ace is probably one of my favorite competitors to watch. Um, but he's had some rough freaking matches. I mean, 
yeah, he aced that tournament last year, but a couple of his matches in that tournament were, were, were a little rocky. You know, so we all have our rocky matches. My problem is I've had a lot of, you know, matches where I came so close and missed out on my five. So I hit my first five today in a movie that I can't stand, which is great. Uh, but, you know, look, I can say, you know, give me one of the, you know, one of the lower competitors, but really I'll take anyone. I mean, there's no reason to settle for, you know, for a lower competitor. I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus here. But, you know, we all know there's some competitors whose records or whose performances are a little, you know, something to be desired. At this point, I'm one of them. But, you know, I'll t I'll, hell, if you want to give me Dimalata tomorrow, I would gladly say yes. If you want to give me Kelly tomorrow, I would gladly say yes. You know, Molly Damon, I would say yes. So really, Christian, it's, it's whoever, uh, you know, I know you're not really making the decisions anymore. It's Grace. Well, so whoever yeah. Grace wants to give me, I'll take it. Well, I share the same sentiment as your manager there when that name is brought up. So please don't do that mm. again. Um, Shannon, uh, last thing here too. You know, I wanted to ask you, you said something. There's two things here. The first part of it is you said something that I found was interesting. You said, we know what ace we're going to get. We know that. Get that in your mind. We know it. When you look at a competitor like Andres Ace Cabrera and you see that version of him today, do you think the Thomas Harpers and the the gold leaders, do you think that they can beat that guy or do you think it's anybody's game? A hundred percent. I think they can beat him. Yeah. They're incredible players. Gold leader was on my short list of people to draft. I mean, upset city is going to turn into a ghost town by the end of this tournament. All I'll right. tell you that. All right. Well, didn't get happened today for corruption, but a hell of a match there, Sean way to fight back. And we will see you guys very, very soon. Thank you to Shannon and Sean. Back to the desk. That's amazing. It's like a magic trick. It's almost like how good my juggling is. I can make myself appear and disappear. When, like when you used to uh, snap during box office Sunday. Uh, Christian, I echo what both managers said at various points in that interview that was conducted by some guy who I hope doesn't quit his day job. And I'll start first with Winston Marshall because what he actually said about Sean Sullivan, I think resonates with a lot of our fans watching, is that, yeah, Sean Sullivan took an L and it was a tough loss. He played with the heart of a champion to come yeah. back after nearly being knocked out on the third question in round number two to crawl all the way back to having the lead. He had the lead in round three and forced Andres Cabrera to answer a tough two point question. That says a lot about that young man with a beard older than my grandfather. And then let's talk about Andres Ace Cabrera, yeah. because look, as Shannon said, it's still anybody's tournament. Anyone can happen. And as far as an upset city goes, people may be picking one person or another, but these are all A plus level Star Wars competitors. And even the ones that lose should be able to keep their head held high. I have to say, Andres Cabrera looked nasty today. He looked good. He looked really good. Nasty. Uh, he was lights out, if I can steal someone else's moniker for a moment, in round one. And what made him look like such a deadly in the same category equal level as a Damon de Milanta today was the look in his eye when he missed the steal it was that look he didn't stop thinking about it he was like ah, I could have picked up that plus one I knew it was eight and he knew it and he and he had the answer Sean Sullivan capitalized got himself out of that KO and, and put himself out of the TKO but it was the look and the and to steal something from one of my favorite franchises of all time, Andres Cabrera today had the eye of the tiger. There's no doubt about it. He looked ferocious today. I mean, I, I we saw how good he was last season. I think he leveled up. I think he leveled up. That's a good Jungle Book reference. And so if you look to the future and you say, okay, well, now it's Cabrera, it's Harper. We've been very impressed with the major so far yeah. this season. Going up against, I, I don't know who to pick. I don't know who's going to miss first. I do know this. Andres is probably losing sleep tonight because he had to use a JTE rule on a question. He's that level. And the major, the loser's got to do push-ups, but not that many because it's going to be a tough game. Yeah, I think that um, he's, this is going to be a crazy match and definitely Harper's biggest test to date. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This is a championship level tournament winner that he's that he's going up against here, too. And the again, the look in the eyes and the smirk on the face of Cabrera when he heard he was getting Harper. This isn't like him thinking like a lot of people have been shuddering when they go Thomas Harper. They, he's like, bring it on, man. I want I want to I want to take this guy out. So they stop talking about him and remember me. 
because this is this is a this is the version of Andre. This is why Shannon said it. We don't know what ace we're getting. Now we know. If Harper gets this ace, I mean, uh, get ready for a war. Well, that's what the whole season is about. Isn't that right, partner? And we are thrilled that everyone is on board for the journey. So for everyone here at Skybound, our writers behind the scenes, the competitors, the managers, Christian Harloff, myself, and our newest crew member, Skippy McDougal, we had a pretty good time today. Christian, why don't you take us out? Yes, we did. And as we see the uh, Ace Sullivan match go down tomorrow, big IG match, Finstock Exchange, Moose Haas makes his Schmodown debut against Jacob Wittenbin, who is also making his Schmodown IG debut. That happens tomorrow for the usual suspects. And this is a big one here on the 28th. On the 28th, Paul Walter Hauser, Richard Jewell Stingray from Cobra Kai goes up against Josh Horowitz. If you don't know Josh from MTV, check out his interview. Some of the best around. What a battle that is going to be this Friday. So make sure you go and you check that out. So Mark Ellis, thank you so much for our great crew at Skybound. Thank you to Andres Cabrera, Winston, Marshall, Shannon, Barney, Sean Sullivan, the whole damn crew. Really appreciate it. Peace out, everybody. See you next time. What's going on? Not much. How you doing, man? How you feeling? I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling ready, though. Feeling ready. I have no idea about this guy. I had no idea where he's from or who he is, but I am ready. Perfect. All right. Yeah, this is our shot, man. This is finally going to happen. Juice and Jacob on the Schmodown head headlines. We're going to... Oh, man. I can't wait. Juice and Jacob. It's It writes itself. It's perfect. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. You know, I've been studying hard, Sam and I, you, you and I, we've been working hard. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, man, man. I can't wait, man. Live events, the whole thing, the whole shebang, Juice and Jacob. We're just going to, we're, yeah, I can't wait. It's, it's, it's great. It's the best day of my life. This it's is a long road. This is our shot, man. All right. Well, I feel like I need to give you a little inspiration. Okay. All right. All right. This is awesome. This is inspiration. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. Well, I'm feeling really inspired. Thanks for that, Juice. Let's do it. Let's get the moose. Let's hit it, baby. <laughs>